<laughs> We've all been there scrolling through Facebook Marketplace and seeing an absolutely insane built truck ready to drive off the lot into the distance as the sun sets. It's really tempting to pick up a truck that already has a lot of the stuff done that you want anyways, so what's stopping you from picking up that already built rig? There's a couple things you should look for when picking up somebody else's old build, so here's your buying guide to picking up a show truck. Before we get into it, I gotta do it. I'm sorry. If you've got someone's old build and need to refresh some parts or have a stock truck already to get built up, we got you. Wheels tires, suspension, performance, accessories, llamas, customoffsets.com. So the first question to ask that will have everything else stemming from it is how long has the truck been built for? Knowing if the lift kit was put in 30 miles ago or 10,000 miles ago will reflect a lot on the maintenance you may need to do to get it back to a decent, safe ride. Once you kind of know what you're getting yourself into for maintenance, then you can dig into more of the specifics behind the truck and if what you're looking at is as good underneath as it is on the outside. When you're looking at a truck build, one of the most important parts to ensure is good is the whole suspension lift kit and like everything around it. There are so many components and things that could bend or break or not be installed right that can lead to some seriously unsafe scenarios. <laughs> Something's not right. It's, it's not right. Something's not right. <laughs> Check over the lift kit and just make sure that it looks to be installed correctly. Lines up, doesn't have four sets of stack blocks for 10 inches of lift in the rear, you know, the good stuff. Check the angles as well because a lot of times dudes like Biggs are gonna wanna go taller and throw a leveling kit on top of their lift kit and it'll like make the upper control arms look like hella slanted and can start causing like CV boot issues and angles that are just bad to ride on and it just won't be nice. Don't mind me. I am not minding you dragging your body army crawl style across the ground behind me. It is definitely not distracting. And while sure, it's a lifted truck and it may not ride amazing, it's definitely still worth taking for a test drive and making sure that the rough country shocks that came with the lift kit eight years ago aren't blown out and it rides like a lumber wagon heading down the road. While you're checking out a lot of the suspension and how it looks, it's probably not a bad idea to jack the wheels up and check the wheel bearings. You don't want your new to you Silverado to come while you're driving home just because you assume the dude had put new wheel bearings in it. Just don't do it. Past the exterior, you should check out the inside of your potentially new rig because you spend 90% of your time inside the truck driving and like 10% outside taking photos for the gram. So check it out. An interior will say a lot about the previous owner and how they probably treated the truck anyways. A big thing to expect, or at least not to be surprised at, is that a lot of lifted trucks will have a blown out outside seat cushion. Sliding in and out of a lifted truck is gonna wear down on the seat and just over time it's gonna rip and look ugly and there's just foam chill in there, I don't know. Pass that when you're inside the truck, just check the mileage, make sure it's what they say it is, and just make sure the interior is up to your personal cleanliness standards. While checking the miles, it's good to double check that the truck body and engine have the same miles. There's not necessarily a way to prove this, but just asking the owner will ensure that you're buying a vehicle that doesn't have an engine swap you didn't know about, or has issues that were attempted to be fixed, and could compound leading to more issues down the road. Just a good idea to ask. The mileage can also tell you a lot about what potential problems could be upcoming for the truck as well. There's a lot of forums and posts about transmissions and trucks going out at a certain time, don't ask me about it, or timing issues with EcoBoost at certain mileages, and just knowing those things can help you know what to expect with your truck. Hence why Kirk sold his EcoBoost at exactly 100,000 miles. Obviously, when you have larger wheels and tires, it can tire things down. See what I did there? <laughs> and wear down on components. If the truck had like 37s or 40s on it and some insane setup that dogs down on the performance of the truck, it's a good idea to know what you're working with under the hood. Miles are always a big thing people ask about when purchasing any vehicle, but it's an especially good thing to know when dealing with a big lifted truck. Custom wheels can get really big and heavy, and if a truck has a tired engine, it's something to know and expect issues to arise unless you do some preventative maintenance. In addition to engine wear, gearing is something good to know with the drivability of the truck that you're interested in. A lot of times you can find the truck's gear ratio if it's stock, either like on the VIN or in the sticker on the door jam or on the differential or just a couple different places, but there's a lot of different spots based on the manufacturer that it can show up. If the truck has aftermarket gearing installed, then it's good to know that too, just so you don't assume that it's got one thing, just for it to have another, and then you go to replace it and you realize that it didn't have the 355s you thought it had, and it had 411s, and it just got really confusing and expensive because you bought stuff you didn't need. Just ask. Another thing to watch out for when diving into a big, sexy showpiece is the title. It can get super distracting when checking out a sweet truck and worrying about all of the other stuff I mentioned to even think about a salvage title. We've had a couple employees here who have been looking at trucks and find a sick Duramax for a good price, and it almost seems too good to be true 
until they realize that they look in the details in their Facebook marketplace and it says that the title is salvaged. Damn. If it's too good of a deal to be true, then trust me, it probably is. Nothing wrong with buying a salvage title vehicle though, if you know what you're doing. I mean, look at Lawson's truck. Talk about a glow up right there, boy. But yeah, a lot of times when body shops or people rebuild a truck, they'll add a lift kit and some wheels and tires because one, it makes for a sick before and after. And two, it can raise the perceived value of a truck once it's lifted with some wheels and tires. So just know what you're getting yourself into when you're looking at a lifted show build. And I think that's just the underlying theme here is kind of just ask a lot of questions if you have any to know what you're gonna be buying and dealing with daily and at shows when you wanna show it off. And of course, when you're looking to show it off, you don't want rust, so just buy down south. Nobody likes a lifted truck with rotted body mounts and holes in the floor from rust. Ask me how I know. <laughs> what I'm gonna learn from in the future is I'll be going down south next time for sure. If the truck you're looking for is custom lighting, then you have a whole other mess of potential problems to deal with. I could probably like literally make a whole video just checking into used custom lighting, but Obviously just make sure that the headlights and blinkers work. Those are your most important parts for just driving and safety. A lot will have like halos or demonized or sequential daytime running lights and or switchbacks. And there could just be a lot of things and issues that goes into all of those making it work and the wiring and all that fun stuff, depending on the light builder. And if the headlights were built a while ago and haven't been touched recently, don't be surprised if there's a goldfish swimming around in a pool of water on the first day that it rains. I'm just kidding. It probably won't happen, but I mean, you never know, right? You're buying somebody else's old showpiece. Okay, that was kind of a lot I feel like, but I hope that covered a lot of the things that you should kind of check or look out for or just be aware of when buying a new to you show truck. And of course, the last thing you should do after buying your lifted, decked out, actually don't put decked out in there. I feel like that's something my grandma would say. Uh, but anyways, once you do pick up that show build, you gotta make it your own with some wheels and tires from custom offsets, which includes mounting and balancing and shipped free to your door if you live in the contiguous states or lower 48 states if you don't like big words. That's all I got, peace.